Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hingham School Committee meeting of, of not October 21st, of November 4th already. Um, we are um, here tonight. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and televised by Harbor Media. If anyone else intends to audio or video record this meeting, can you please let me know? All right, seeing none, we will move on to item two, approval of minutes. Um, item 2.1, minutes of the school committee meeting held on October 21st, 2019. Those are in your packets. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the school committee meeting held on October 21st, 2019. I have a second. Yes, thank you. Uh, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great, any opposed? No, all right, great, approved, thank you. Um, item number three is questions and comments. The Hingham School Committee encourages community engagement and welcomes questions and comments as agenda items are discussed at the meeting. We have 15 minutes set aside at the beginning of every meeting for comments or questions that fall under the purview of the school committee um, and are not already on tonight's agenda. If anyone wishes to speak, please come to the microphone, state your name, address, and address your comments to the chairperson. Is anyone here? Any public comments? Okay, seeing none. We will move on then to item number four, is superintendent's report. Thank you very much and good evening, everyone. Uh, the first item is the November 1 enrollment report, uh, and these are all included in your packet. Uh, as we, go, we scroll to the bottom of that, with the total K-12 in district um, is currently 4,192, uh, and that's an increase of 11 students from our June 2019 um, when we ended, which was 4,181. Uh, and then the total of whom the Hingham Public Schools has program or fiscal responsibility for uh, in June was 4,318. We are now six more with 4,324. So that's the enrollment as of November 1. The second item I have is the South Shore Education Collaborative Report. I attended a uh, meeting recently. Um, the budget projection sheet and program enrollment for the Board of Directors meeting of October 11, 2019 is attached for your review. The enrollment projections and budget projections for the fiscal year are in line with the projected budget. Um, the financial projection for FY20 indicates there will be a positive financial balance at the close of the school year, so that's all good news. And the OPEB uh, trust balance was reviewed and seems to be in line. So. Um, we're all good at South Shore Education Collaborative. Things are running along smoothly there. The next item is elementary curriculum updates and summaries. We'll give that to Jamie. Dr. So Mubola. in your, good evening everyone. Nice to see you all tonight. Uh, in your packet, you should find, uh, you should have copies of the pre-K through five curriculum summaries. As you know, annually, they are presented to the committee as by way of um, letting you know about curriculum across the elementary level. And you'll note that this year they remain mostly the same, uh, apart from a reference to toolbox through social emotional health uh, through the K to, through uh, K through five. But if there are any questions or comments, I'd be happy to. Liza. Um, so I did notice that that I like this format. I don't remember it. In so this I should I should have prefaced that's Four. a great question because we did change the format by which they're distributed to families as well as post on the website. So historically, you remember you got multicolored uh, trifold or quadruple fold uh, papers uh, that each year as we reassess the district's commitment to a green uh, being more green, um, we decided to make the shift and put them on the website. Um, and if you go to the live, they actually have links to the departments um, throughout the summary. So they can always reference back to English or back to uh, math. So sorry. So that actually is, so they are much easier to read. Oh, great. In this yeah. format. Well, the font's not seven. Um, <laughs> the, well, it's also, it, it flows, whereas the trifolds were, mm -hmm. they were what they were. Um, I did notice that there are links in some places and not in others. Oh, okay. So that should be consistent. Double checked, yeah. and um, and I did notice that the suggestions for parent assistance seemed to be, and I didn't read it. I didn't go back and forth and look <laughs> compare them, but seem to be the same thing in every grade. Mm. And having been a parent, there there are <coughs> subtleties as your kids get older sure. of 
how you can how you interact a little differently. Um, so you might want to think about that or ask the teachers of are there things that or maybe ask some parents are there things that you know the way you, you interact with your child differently with school or if the teachers want more interaction in certain years and not other years um, so and then in the ELA um, I also noticed that was pretty consistent every grade and one suggestion is maybe put in examples of some of the literature that they read um, like isn't there one year when everybody reads wonder or or maybe fourth and fifth grade talk like talk about some of the selected um, literature that's read besides the journeys collection to, to give parents a sense of what their kids are going to be and I know it changes but um, well now with our new format we actually have the ability to have them be as lengthy or as short as needed whereas yeah. before I think we were always thoughtful of it had to fit on an 11 by 17 yeah. back to back right yeah. so now that we have a new format we could actually be thoughtful of how we uh, present the information yeah um, but I overall I thought it was really great and so much easier to read great and um, I also found the, the language to me seemed easier to read than mm -hmm. those, More those little yeah. brochures. <laughs> it was like, it was kind of overwhelming. So um, I think people will appreciate this. Great. So appreciate my the suggestions feedback. are to fine tune and. Absolutely. So, yep. But thank you. Thank you for the feedback. One. All right. And the last thing I have on my report is my monthly update on my induction and goals. Uh, and I included for you, um, should have a sheet with uh, my goals on there. And then, uh, as I've told you before, I build on them. So in September, they were uh, red in color. And in October, they were purple. Uh, and I won't go through all those. You can read those on your leisure. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, but I will highlight a couple things. And, um, in saying that I continue to make progress in both the collection of data regarding the operations of schools as well as pro uh, progressing on my yearly goals. Um, the month of October was very busy. It was highlighted by two community engagement events sponsored by the cool, uh, school committee with coffee with the superintendent. We had about 30 people, if I counted right, uh, between the two events, uh, which was very nice. Uh, in addition, there was a guest. I was also the guest speaker for the Hingham CPAC in October um, with a brief uh, presentation and then some LinkedIn question and answer period. Uh, in October, I met with both the chief of police and fire to discuss their relationships with the public schools, and I met with the town administrator for our annual monthly meeting. During the month, I met with my mass mentor two times for more than six hours. Um, this mentor also attended a school department leadership team meeting, observed a school visit um, principal consultation, and we discussed my data collection to date. The induction program is going well um, and on schedule for my February 24 presentation, so that's going well. Uh, I will say that Dr. Lavilloa is doing a, a fantastic job because he's on the goals about the comprehensive uh, interventions. Uh, I know that he's put a lot of work into continuing that process, putting his team together and getting that work done, piloting now the STAR uh, assessment tool, which is our, our, uh, our assessment for uh, benchmarking, et cetera. Um, so we're, we're starting that process, so that's working nicely. Um, and then finally, I, well not finally, sorry, I have two things before I say finally. Um, I want to say that I held my second uh, student meeting for my uh, student superintendent leadership council, October 24th. And I have to say this is a wonderful group of uh, very vocal students uh, that have taken the responsibility very seriously. Um, they come prepared, ready to talk. Uh, it's honestly one of the most enjoyable activities on that I look forward to the most. Um, there's a lot of great things I do, but I just absolutely love spending time with the students. Um, that's, a, that's a great time for me. Um, and then finally on the website, I know that people have been thinking about website and, and our web presence, and uh, Dr. Labillowar has um, formed a, a, an advisor group that's working with that right now, narrowing down the optional uh, web platforms that will be brought forward to a larger group of stakeholders, including parents, students, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, and others as appropriate. And, and so it's our goal to have a new web designer ready for approval by possibly early January, I think, uh, is the goal, correct? It is, yes. Yeah. So yeah. we're moving along and, and uh, progressing nicely on the goals. So that's all I've got. Uh, 
Dr. Austin, just a suggestion. I'm not sure if that would work for you, but um, try to think about uh, bringing one or two students from the middle school. So that way they sort of, to your leadership team. So that way they can sort of like be empowered. <coughs> as they come to the high school, you already have two new ones as you may be losing a couple of, a couple of seniors for your leadership team. Yeah. Uh, in, in that way too, you'll be hearing what's going on at the middle school. I think it would be a great idea. That is a good suggestion. And one of the things when I was speaking with uh, Principal Derek Smith, uh, he actually has formed a very similar group to mine with the same kind of format uh, at the middle school. So it's something they're getting used to. So I think um, that will be a nice dovetail into it at some point when we move the groups together. And uh, I look forward to seeing what his progress is on, on that group as well. So I think that's a good suggestion. Thank you. Just one good thing on the special education goal. Um, it looks like you're doing a lot of professional development. I was just reading what you had sent us. Um, is any of that around communication, like effective communication? That I would look for. I, I think it's, what I said was, you know, Dr. Venice has obviously been fair in a very robust um, work uh, with the professional development. I believe communication is embedded within your professional um, development with your teachers and your, um, that you're working with about communicating with families, et cetera. I don't know one of the things that we talked about today. So, is there anything you would add to that about communication with the professional development you're offering right now to teachers? Hello. Um, uh, so, uh, yes, um, really carrying on the same initiative that we had um, at the beginning of last year, where we're really working on um, developing. Um, more transparent um, strengths-based IEP meetings. Um, and then adi in addition to that, <clears throat> I had them for the entire day last week. Um, and the emphasis was on metacognition and um, teaching um, the faculty how to be metacognitive themselves so they can teach their students how to be metacognitive and then how to bring that piece into discussions um, about student programming um, so that um, they are really um, thinking more broadly about how to program for students. Um, so that's how it, that's being addressed mm -hmm. um, through some of the PD that I'm doing with them. Okay. Okay. What does it mean to be metacognitive? It's to think about your own thinking. And so one of the keys to making executive functioning instruction um, actually beneficial and useful is to teach children how to think about their own thinking. Um, but I need to teach the adults how to do that first. Um, so, <laughs> so that was where we started. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I can bore you with that. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Vanessa. <laughs> that's it for me. I, I, that's it. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So about the communication plan, um, it says that the policy committee is continuing this work and has multiple drafts to consider moving forward. Is that, what? did I put the wrong one down? It should be, it should be your, um, Okay. My, my fault on that Multiple one. drafts, meaning... I thought you would, you would develop... I um, have a very... I have an out... I have right. a, a very drafty outline. Okay. One. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, okay. I don't want to be misrepresented here. All right, no, I'll, I'll, make, I'll correct okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, though, for the yep. credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, moving on to item five, communications. Sure, under communications, um, uh, several of us uh, attended a meeting this morning, and in your packet you have the, um, the forecast for the, um, the town uh, that was given to you uh, in your packet. Uh, it was a very brief meeting, and just as a, a precautionary note, a lot of these figures that they're using in the forecast are based on last year's figures and not on current figures. So we're still waiting for what this year's aid was go is going to be to public schools, et cetera. Um, so it is very preliminary and it's certainly not final. Um, and so that's what I had so far. I don't know if you want to add anything to it, um, Michelle or Carlos. Sure, so, um, so myself, Carlos, um, Dr. Austin, John Ferris met with um, uh, Tom, Tom Mayo 
Um, Sean Monte Stewart, Sue Nickerson, um, Karen Bob Curley, Karen Johnson from the Board of Selectmen, and Victor Valter from Adcom were there. So it was a very just brief, like 20, 30 minute meeting just to go over the forecast for the very first forecast for fiscal year 21. Um, so we <coughs> come on that. So that's, uh, the official launch of budget season. It feels like it happens earlier and earlier every year. Um, but this was sort of just a very early kickoff. So a lot more to come on that. Uh, any other communications? Nope. No. All right. Um, student communications. Emma cannot be here tonight because she is participating in, at King Philip at the um, playoffs. So hey. she can't be here tonight. Yes. So good for good for them, um, and good luck to them. Um, item five three. Any other communications? Administration? Anything? No. Nope. Anyone on the committee? Anything else? No. Okay. Great. All right. So moving into item six. New business. 6.1 to receive the Plymouth River School Improvement Plan for 2019-2020 and an update on the 2018-2019 plan progress and to act as appropriate. There's no clicker, so you have to rely on me. <laughs> Not appointing. <laughs> okay. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome. Oh, that's a little dark. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm here Welcome. tonight to thank you to give you an update of the progress on the action steps from last year's school improvement plan, and also to give you an introduction of this year's goals. So I just first wanted to start with the mission statement of the Plymouth River School community, where children are treasured, is to foster a love of learning in an innovative, cooperative climate, which empowers all students to be competent, productive, caring and responsible citizens. Here are some of the school council members who contributed, um, as well as additional input. Um, I'd like to thank my assistant principal, Charlene Fabrizio, for helping with some of these action steps and also being present tonight. And uh, one of my teachers, computer science teacher, Tina Wehner, is joined by me tonight as well. Thank you for your support with everything. Um, but the committee is made up, um, as you know, of teachers, parents and myself, um, we are looking for a community representative. We had one, and um, but we're looking for a, um, a new person that can make the monthly commitment. And I've been working with the new director of elder services to hopefully secure somebody soon. So um, last year, our theme, our overarching theme was team, together everyone achieves more. And on goal one, that revolved around high quality <coughs> instruction and assessment. And really, we tried to key in on closing the achievement gaps, which I know we've been working on for a couple of years and have made some progress on that. I, it does say completed. And um, you'll see when I get into my new goals how this, yes, it's been completed, but we're um, diving even deeper. So I'll explain that when we get to goal one for this coming year. We started the computer science immersion um, initiative, which has been fabulous. And um, I have a teacher at each grade level and some specialists just creating some technology rich um, <coughs> classroom activities so that students can really show their learning in multiple ways. Uh, the literacy team and the math team, they have been um, providing consistent expectations for data meetings and they're helping us um, look through the data and guide the groupings. We also were able to offer for the first time since I've been there before school tutoring in literacy and math and that was funded by Tudor One. <coughs> and um, we provided literacy and math interventions to targeted students through tier three um, which is first thing in the morning. Okay and then goal two was around social emotional development which was great um, we kicked off with the toolbox as you know and um, what I tried to do is bring some literature into the classroom so I would purchase a book and have a monthly theme based on whatever that theme was and we tie it to a toolbox tool and so that way um, the lessons were taught not only with the toolbox lessons but also using literature to um, to really enhance the tool. We brought in some uh, Rebecca Silva who is our cultural enrichment coordinator has been fantastic with working with me and bringing in some enrichment shows that pertain to social emotional development. Um, we had 
a social emotional committee, both school based and district based. That will be also continuing. And we administered a screening tool so that we could identify um, a targeted group to really focus in on some of the social skills. Um, and then I had said that we set a monthly <coughs> wide school focus. Um, and on the next page, you'll see some of the themes. Um, one more. Um, in September, we had the staff training for the toolbox, and I'm not going to read all of them, but you can see how um, each month we would choose a tool, and then we would try to um, have an overarching theme that would go through the entire month. Um, and it really, really took off. The kids internalized it, and parents were talking about it, which that's how I know that the message is really getting home and they're practicing it at home. But you can see that some of some of the themes um, around social emotional development, just being polite, being patient, um, responsible. One of my favorites was the power of yet, and I heard a lot of students using that term um, throughout the month and, and after, so that was really, that really worked out nicely. Um, I was happy to hear that we were featured on the Inclusive Schools Network. Um, the, as you know, the Inclusive Schools week last year was in December and each school did something and our plan was um, <coughs> highlighted on their on their homepage, which was great. So um, it was nice to see that a lot of the work that the staff put into it um, really paid off and was able to be highlighted in that way. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Goal three is to strengthen a school culture which embraces a homeschool community connection and that is um, in progress right now we made a lot of progress but I think we still have a little ways to go so we're going to continue that goal for next year and um, I think we did a nice job using social media to really highlight some of the things that we're doing and get out into the community we did increase our partnerships but um, we have a couple of ideas for this year to form some new partnerships with local local <coughs> agencies, um, I had a coffee and with um, oh thanks, thank you, with the incoming kindergarten parents and um, and that was well attended, and I'm continuing that for next year as well. Okay, so moving on to um, the 2019-2020 goals. Um, as you know, it's our 50th year, so our overarching theme will be honoring the past, celebrating the present, and building the future. We started off this year with a really fun event. Um, current parents who are alumni came and were called up onto stage, and it was really cute because the parents' <coughs> school photo from back when they were at PRS was shown up on the project um, on the screen behind them, and they walked up with their child. So that that was a fun event. The parents and the kids really got a kick out of that. <clears throat> so goal one, as I said, um, last year was high quality instruction and assessment, um, but this year we're taking it a step further to make sure that we obtain equity inclusiveness within this goal. And so some of the new things that we're doing is um, we're looking at, if you look at that pyramid up there, we really looked at the different tiers and what we're offering during that time, both for academic and social emotional. And um, one of the things that we felt, and thanks to Dr. Labelwa, um, we're piloting the STAR 360 assessment, which will really give us some targeted skills to work on. And our school, each school's piloting a different grade level, so PRS will be piloting grade five and kindergarten. Um, also new this year for mathematics, we're providing through our math specialist student-centered coaching, which is a model where the math specialist and the teacher will work together in um, tier one. And then we'll, we'll continue the literacy support through our TI model, um, where everyone gets what they need and then through tier three morning pullout and also smaller special education groups. Um, goal two, um, this photo was our kindness rock garden which our, our teacher Holly Kellifer helped a lot with and um, did a great job but we're for goal two we're we're still working on the social emotional goals um, but we're going we want to strengthen those and really have the students internalize those 
and um, having the families involved. So we did hear a lot of feedback from families that the kids were coming home and talking about the different things, but we wanted to send home this year some activities, so it's a little bit more structured. So we just sent home our first newsletter um, last week. And um, I already received a lot of feedback from parents on that, that they just feel a little bit more connected to the skill. We also had more staff that was trained in CPI, which is um, strategies to de-escalate students. And um, we're beginning the targeted support groups, which from the survey that I had mentioned that we gave last year, now we're taking the data from that survey and working with those students in the targeted support groups through our adjustment counselor. And we have our Kindness Rocks Garden, so if you're driving by, it's right out front. You can't miss it. And goal three, strengthen the school culture, which embraces a homeschool community collaboration. We're continuing this goal. We established just recently a new preschool kindergarten liaison who will help the principals and central office do some community outreach to the preschools. Um, we do have a lot of things in place for uh, families, EL families, but I feel like um, that we needed to have a little bit of more in building support with that. So I had found a pen scanner. It reads words, it defines, and it translates. So if we're on the spot with a parent and um, we don't have a translator, which we do hire translators for, um, for parent-teacher um, um, conferences, I'm sorry, uh, but I thought that this would be helpful in supporting stu um, students and families with the translations. The pen is actually designed for dyslexic students, but I think it would come in handy for other reasons too. Um, the website, we're going to jump on the website bandwagon and um, really look at our website and also look at our individual teacher websites to make sure that they're up to date and informative. Our Mad About Science program is something we've had in place for a long time, but I'd like to switch out some of those bags to have more hands-on STEM activities that can be um, family friendly. And um, with the new Senior Center Director, I'm looking to expand some of the programs and connections we have with them. And uh, we just had STEAM Week last week, so these are some of the things. We had South Shore Natural Science Center up in the left fifth grade went to um, to work with the Bruins and talked about angles and how the equipment was made. Top right was a coding lesson with drag and drop and down the bottom you can see the little iguana we had a reptile specialist come in so it was um, it was a great week lots of great um, engineering skills hands-on learning um, this is they were building a bridge here and seeing how much it could hold and the picture on the right is a an animal habitat and there's a little stuffed animal in there that you can't see but <laughs> he looks secure <laughs> and goal four is something really new that um, that we've never done but I thought that it would be a great thing to do that we're gonna um, this year focus on professional develop development in-house we have a lot of um, opportunities out of the district and within the district but also right within PRS so one thing that we're starting with is a book club and I think there's over 20 teachers signed up for the book club and it's the book called Teach Like Finland I don't know if you're familiar with that at all but they talk about the key ingredients of being um, a, a happy school an inclusive school and also um, having academic success and just having some key ingredients such as your well-being, feeling of belong, belonging, autonomy, mastery, and your mindset. So the teachers are really excited. We just started reading chapter one and didn't have our first meeting. It will be next week. So we're going to um, take some ideas from that book and put them into use in the school. And um, just lastly, I'll email all of you um, these links because I, I think you just have a paper packet, but just some things you can stay up to date. We post our school council notes every month. We have video updates monthly, and we also have Facebook and Twitter page. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, yeah, thank you. Job. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um...
Jane Killis. All right. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I forget every time. I'm sorry. We need to approve the school improvement plan. Um, does someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to um, to approve the Plymouth River School Improvement Plan for the year 2021. Oh, Let's call you 20. 19 and 20. For 20, 2019 19. through 2020. 2019 to 2020. I have a second. I'll second. Thank you, Ed. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank no. you. Approved. Thank you very much. Plymouth River School. All right. Item 6.2. To receive the Foster School Improvement Plan for 2019-2020 and an update of the 2018-2019 plan progress and act as appropriate. We'll remember that at the end to act okay. as appropriate. <laughs> Keep forgetting that for some reason. Good evening. And, um, Good evening. Thank you for having us. Um, let's see. Okay. Our Foster Elementary School Council members is made up of representatives, teacher representatives, as well as parent representatives, community representatives, and um, Liza is our school committee liaison. Uh, I would also like to introduce and thank Jen Newell, my assistant principal, for being here as well, who also helps to contribute to our school council as well as um, everything else day to day at Foster. So. Um, as we go through and start, when we looked at the process for this year of developing our new school improvement plan, we started with the Hingham Public School Strategic Plan. And that was really the initial place of where we went back and reflected of, of where the Hingham Public School Strategic Plan is and what our goals are to really focus on what we wanted to do. We then took the needs of the foster school and district initiatives that fall under the strategic plan. Um, and we looked at the district initiatives that are currently in place as well as where we are at Foster School in, um, in the district initiatives to then move to how to develop our own school improvement plan. At a staff meeting, we started with five ideas or topics and those were posted on chart paper and our staff chose which of those five topics they wanted to participate in and then provided feedback on the chart papers. We took the chart paper and brought it back to the school council to review and go over and then as part of the school council we were refined and created the, the school improvement plan. So this is just the process of how this year we, we created our, our goals. Uh, for the school improvement plan. Some of the considerations that we took into as we did this was the district strategic and professional development plans, as well as information from a Title I survey, our staff and school council input, data from M MCAS formative, as well as considerations of the budget. Our enrollment data to date is, um, consists of 494 students at Foster. Um, and we also had teacher and paraeducator input. Our goals for 2018 and 2019 focused on the themes of Mindset Matters, Stretching and Growing was our theme, as well as Be Kinder Than Necessary. Our first goal focused on literacy, really refining the instructional strategies, assessments, and materials. Our second goal focused on math, in refining the instructional strategies, assessments, and materials in math. Our third goal was focused around responsible learners, creating students who are responsible learners. Our fourth goal was focused on service in continuing to develop an understanding and appreciation of giving to and supporting others. And lastly, our fifth goal for 2018 and 2019 was a community committed to global awareness and focusing on the understanding and appreciation for a more environmentally <coughs> aware community. As we, we looked at and reflected on our first goal in literacy, we found some, um, we analyzed the data and we found some strengths of the resources that we use, the purpose of the resource, um, and we identified different financial implications and alignment and a use of common language. The, some of these items we continue to work on, but we really tried to focus on what materials we have, what materials we need to support 
and we found the strengths of the program include leveled readers, the scope and sequence of the program, as well as research-based instruction. And some areas of growth that we identified as part of patterns over time with our MCAS data was response to text, our students' response to text. And so we're really trying to look at the response to text and, and how we support our students and practice the skills of responding to text in various different um, literature. Our second goal for 2018-19 surra was um, surrounding mathematics. And we are using a math specialist and a coaching model to facilitate student growth and increase our student our, I'm sorry, increase our teacher expertise in math instruction. So some of our strengths of our program that we found were the scope and sequence, again, the use of manipulatives and games to build number sense. And we identified an area of growth in fact fluency. And so one of the things that we are piloting this year is the Reflex Math Fluency Program, and the student is using this program on the iPad in the picture. As part of our community of learners, we continue to develop responsible learners who participate in instruction. And we, last year was our first year implementation of the Toolbox Social Emotional Program. At all school meetings, we work to create a sense of community. And we highlighted the tools in the month and community service. And we celebrated the foster school community. We also have Foster Plus, which is an after school program that <coughs> is run by teachers and, and also parents over the winter. Um, the winter. So students have the opportunity to participate in different courses that are of interest to them after school. And our computer science initiative as well provides students with the opportunities in the computer science lab as well as within classrooms to engage in the highly motivating instruction using technology. Um, last year we had a computer science exhibit at school and it was really fun to see the different students engaging with the different programs from kindergarten to fifth grade. Their excitement, their engagement, it was really exciting to see. Our next goal for 2018-19 was a community focused on service. Um, and so we participate monthly in different activities so that students have an awareness of giving to others and thinking of others. We have candy for the troops, trick or treat for UNICEF, which we are continuing to do this year as well. We collect food for the Hingham Food Pantry. Uh, at the holidays, we provide donations to the commander. We um, help with the donations of food for the Commander Anderson House, uh, as well as Anton's Coat Drive. Our Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts help us with the Anton's Coat Drive, so we have that community partnership. We have our Grade One Kindness Club, which is works in collaboration with our high school kindness club and has been successful uh, as an after school program as well as our inclusive schools week celebration last year our students as you can see here were invited to the state house to honor our grade one students as well as our high school students in their participation in the kindness club which was exciting uh, and the last goal for 2018 and 19 is foster a community committed to global awareness. And so we continue to have our green team, which meets on early release days, and it's a parent, great parent-run program. And we have different opportunities for students to participate. There are two groups, so one is the fall group and one is the spring group. And there is a group of students who meet, and there are different speakers that come on the early release days. There's different opportunities for students to learn about global awareness. We also have bike walk to school day each September. And we are continuing with our collaboration with Holly Hill Farm and planting and harvesting lessons. The picture here you can see is students having it, which you can mostly see the pancakes. However, there are some potatoes, which are home fries that are, were harvested from our garden at Foster. So a portion of the potatoes on this day was, were harvested from our um, garden at Foster. And we continue to have recycling in the cafe and classrooms. Our theme for 2019-2020 is I am a masterpiece. So really this year we're trying to focus on students uh, individual, their strengths, um, and highlighting each student as a masterpiece. The goals for 2019 and 2020, our first goal is focusing really on individualized instruction. 
Uh, we are looking at the workshop model, our RTI blocks, which we are using the term a win block, what I need. And that is our first goal is really looking at our <coughs> multi-model and inclusive practices approach. Our second goal is to refine and develop the instruction of the social emotional strategies within our academic and social settings. Our third goal is our computer science initiative and continuing this initiative and really expanding upon it. So really what we, th what we did with our goals this year is to continue to develop what is already in progress and really look at how to continue to build them. Our fourth goal is utilizing data decision making process to provide feedback for instructional planning and instruction. This goal ties closely in with our first goal, so really looking at the data and finding what students need and then providing that instruction. So goals one and goals four are, are closely aligned and a lot of what we'll talk about in each of the goals or, or what you'll see as part of the school improvement plan, the two goals align and um, could overlap as well because they're so well connected. And lastly, we're focusing on collaboration and communication from school to community through our service learning, our outreach, as well as our in-house programming. Our first goal, increasing individualized instruction, we have created our What I Need block, which really we're renaming our instructional tiers. So we're focused on targeted in intervention, and we're using our core programs with additional support from our resources such as the Reflex Math, which focuses on our fluency, Math fluence, Fact flu Fluency, IXL, StoryWorks, our StoryWorks Junior, and the Level Literacy Intervention. We also participated in STEM Week and Inclusive Schools Week. Our second goal is to refine instruction and independent application of our social emotional strategies. So we are looking at the student risk screening scale and we are using the student risk screening scale to, you, to focus on the HTSS social emotional and we are using all school meetings to present the, we are focusing on two of our toolbox strategies each month and we're using our all school meeting to focus on these and we are also going back to the different tools that students can use and helping students apply and use these tools independently. So while we're teaching the, the tools, the goal is that students can identify when to use the right tool and will use the tool independently and that's where we're trying to move towards. <coughs> Excuse me. We are expanding and continuing to integrate the district computer science initiative into all of our classrooms, kindergarten through grade five. We've changed our schedule this year so that our kindergarten through grade five students all receive instruction in the computer lab each week with our computer science teacher. Before there were some grades who went to the, com the lab every other week just based on the schedule. But we have made our schedule so that each grade level, every student, every class is going um, it's, I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's not once a week, it's once every of our six day cycle. So it's mostly once a week, but um, once of our uh, six day cycle. We are also going to continue with our math and tech night. And last year we had our computer science exhibit, which was a success and we'd like to continue sharing the great work that is happening as a result of the support that we've received um, in the computer science initiative. We are looking at our computer science teacher going into classrooms and doing work in classrooms with teachers, co-teaching, as well as the work that's being done in the labs. Our fourth goal is to utilize the data decision-making process to provide feedback for instructional planning and instruction. This year we started a process where we had a data meeting at the beginning of the year, so we took our beginning of the year assessments and as a grade level, we looked at all of the students and we identified student strengths and we identified areas for student growth. This is a collaborative approach to planning our groups, our interventions, our instruction, and really looking at that what I need block, our win block. 
and we are providing ongoing monitoring and effectiveness of the appropriateness. So we will relook at the data coming up in the middle of November and we want to create groups that are flexible based on student growth so really knowing where our students are what they need and trying to have flexible groups so that we can move students in and out of instruction as they need so the, in this picture this is a, a data meeting with our kindergarten staff and our reading specialist and our math specialist and so they're um, looking at different assessments and we're identifying where students are strengths and weaknesses are. <coughs> the last goal is focusing on collaboration and communication from school to community through service learning, outreach, as well as in-home, in-house programming. So our teachers really wanted to look at not only what we're doing for community service, but bridging school and the community. We participate in the food pantry donations, as well as trick-or-treat for UNICEF. On the right-hand side, there's a picture of a bag that a student in the Kindness Club made because we, the Kindness Club, decorated bags for a program in East Bridgewater that provides meals to homeless, um, so the homeless. So bags were decorated for meals to go in with positive messages. And we are also still working with the green team as well to provide partnerships with the community as well as different activities um, to promote in our weekly foster family facts, which is our weekly update to families on the happenings of the school. Our, our one thing that we included this year was our Spanish, Spanish teacher, I'm sorry, um, Mrs. Vangel, she provided pictures and act updates on different STEAM activities that she did in her Spanish class. So that was one way that we're trying to increase um, and provide parents with not only pictures but also information about what's happening in the school. And our last page is just a few pictures of some of those programs of what our students are fortunate enough to receive in the school as well as how we reach out into our community. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wilcox. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Carrie and I had the privilege of uh, going to the State House this year uh, with the principals of uh, PIS and South. And uh, we are, we can, we're waiting to hear when the date is that you will be. Um, at the State House with Jen and some of your leadership. So I wanted to congratulate you and Foster for, you know, uh, being recognized as the 2019 School of uh, Recognition for your performance uh, with the 2019 MCAS. Uh, so you only, you're only actually making uh, uh, improvement on high achievement and high growth, which is great. So congratulations, and we're looking forward to being at the State House with all of you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. it's definitely, uh, it, it reflects the many years of hard work by our t staff as well as our students, so we're very excited about it. Thank you. That is awesome. I will also note that while all of our schools did well, you'll hear at the next meeting, Foster is at the 99th percentile. So they performed as well or better than 99% of the elementary schools across the state. That's amazing. Excellent work. Foster. We're excited. Thank you. Yes, that is true. You achieved your goals. We achieved our goals. <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, check. Thank you so much. All right, that's great. Thank you, Rose. Um, all right, item. Uh, we have to approve. Oh, <laughs> I did forget again. I'll I did not know make why the I second wrong. mistake twice. I do not know why. I cannot you remember. You have one more chance next time. I know. <laughs> you know what? It's because I missed the first set. That's why. When I missed that meeting for the first set, I don't all right. I'm not in my group. All I'll right. I'm glad to make a motion thank you. to approve the Foster okay. School Improvement Plan for 2019 2020 fiscal year. Liza, do you want to second? second that. Thank you. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, approved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next one, don't wait for me to ask for the motion. Just make it, and then I won't forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you both so much. Really appreciate the updates. All right. Item 6.3, um, to discuss the Massachusetts Association of School Committee resolutions and act as appropriate. So, sorry, folks, but there's a lot of these to read. Um, so I'm going to actually ask Carlos to just get, because Carlos, as we all remember, is elected as our 
delegate to the um, annual conference that is happening later this week. <coughs> and as the delegate, um, Carlos will take our votes on these resolutions to the meeting to vote on behalf of the Hingham School Committee. So I'll let you explain a little more about it. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you uh, to our fellow, my fellow school committee members for uh, trusting me with that uh, role of the delegate representing us. I would respectfully ask that as you uh, read and uh, reflect on the resolutions that we're about to uh, vote on them, that you vote thinking about you know, the school, uh, the public schools in Massachusetts. It's true that you know, some of them may not apply to us, but when we do vote, let's just think you know, collectively. Um, and that's all I would ask, respectfully. Okay. So I think hopefully everyone received my email. Um, so everyone has read through the resolutions and prepared with questions or comments. And then I think we I had sort of assigned everyone one resolution or two resolutions to just read. We don't need to go through the entire thing because they're quite lengthy, but just maybe read the title, the resolution that therefore be resolved section, and then the rationale, and then we can make a motion to vote and discuss. Do you want to vote one by one, or do you want to read them through and then go back and vote? We can, uh, what do you suggest? Uh, that's what I think, just in case okay. there's some that people sure. maybe not want to vote on. All right, so I believe Carrie is up first with number okay. one. So Thank resolution you. one, banning poly polystyrene from schools, and this was submitted by the Silver Lake Regional School District. Um, so where is the U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon Schools was created in 2011 to recognize schools' efforts to reduce environmental impact and cost, improve the health of, and wellness of schools, students, and staff, and provide effective environmental and sustainability education. And there, there are several other yeah, whereas, you, so I'll skip down okay. to the bottom. Therefore, be it resolved that MASC urged the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to ban the use of ex ex expanded polystyrene foam cups, bowls, plates, and trays from Massachusetts public schools for the 2022-2023 school year. And the rationale for this is proponents cite the presence of toxins, including carcinogens and polystyrene, and note that the containers manufactured with the su substance can be found in food, beverage containers that might pose a risk to students and others. All right. Um, do you want to make a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, approve, um, that we vote to approve um, Vote in favor, favorable on resolution number one. I'll second. Carrie, second. Okay. Any discussion on this? I would just say that I, I'm in favor of it because we do this now in our schools, okay. and so let's support other Others. schools of saying it's possible to do it and mm -hmm. stay within budget, and it's a good thing for everyone to participate in. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other? Questions, discussion? Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? All right, perfect. Resolution one. Uh, resolution number two, Ness. Sorry, resolution number two pertains to educator diversity and profess professional licensure uh, submitted by the Arlington School Committee. Um, so I'm going to skip down to the therefore it be resolved that the Massachusetts Association of the School Committees calls for the elimination of the Massachusetts Test for Educator Licensure, or MTEL, and the Massachusetts Performance Assessment for Leaders as a <coughs> licensing requirement for educators, and be it further resolved that the Massachusetts Association for the School Committees calls for the governance and licensure of professional educators to be vested in a board comprised of licensed educators. And the rationale behind this is the licensure of Massachusetts educators is governed by the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. The oversight of licensure by non-educators has resulted in a complex, difficult licensure system that disqualifies, uh, that discourages qualified candidates from applying for licensure and employment in Massachusetts. <coughs> Recruiting a diverse, qualified cohort of new educators will be enhanced if the barriers presented by the MTEL are removed, and if licensure regulations and standards are placed in the hands of a committee of educators. An expanded explanation in support of this resolution can be found on the M, um, MCAS MASC website. All right. So I'll make a motion that we vote uh, favorable, favorable, no, favorable to approve 
resolution number two. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, all right, first and second. Any discussion? question yeah I was gonna actually staff could comment yes that's on this I I tried to find the expanded explanation and couldn't find it I, know. I didn't know if anyone <laughs> <laughs> he's like I'm new here man I'm a <laughs> I think that's it's incredibly complicated I guess I'll say that the MTELs <laughs> are the assessment that must be taken prior to licensure um, the first one is generally skills and literacy, which ensures a proficiency in terms of writing and reading and um, responding to text if memory serves. It's been a while. Anybody else in the audience can help me out. Uh, and then depending on your subject area, there might be a subject-specific assessment. Um, I, I, I guess I'm not making the direct connection between the elimination of the MTEL with the influx of a diverse teaching population. So. It's not that I don't think that the idea has merit. I'm having a hard time connecting the thoughts, I guess. Um, th it certainly has been um, the, part of the narrative around the licensure structure um, has been that the, there is a level of, um, and I also should note my bias as a, a professor in a, a teacher prep a licensure preparation program at a, at a local university. So um, there is rigorous expectations that our educators are expected to meet relative to licensure. Mm -hmm. um, do I think that they need to rethink the licensure process? Uh, yes. Do I think that that is done through the elimination of the MTEL? I'm not quite, I'm not convinced, I guess. I would like to see a bigger overhaul than just removal of the MTEL I don't know that that one thing then um, helps them meet their goal, I guess. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And others in the audience got more than, yeah. I, I think you'd be open to hearing to others too, but yeah. that's certainly my opinion. I get it. Um, yeah. I've certainly heard of people who have a level of struggle passing those, those tests, but then it also raises the question, at least to me, of their content knowledge to then pass the assessment. So, right. yeah. June? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm June Gustafson, president of the Home Education Association. I've taken several MTELs, and um, I took the uh, what used to be the elementary one to six certification test, and um, I would have to disagree because they test you on phys ed, music, art, um, all the specialty subjects as well as reading mathematics um, and honestly to me that test and the middle school humanities test felt like it was just a huge number of questions that almost seemed like educational trivia rather than testing true educator knowledge so I just would like to say that so, so you'd agree uh, June that this removing that definitely would remove some of the barriers for some of Yes, uh, and I think speaking as someone who is a minority teacher, um, it the barriers, um, the tests are, when I took them, they were $100 each. I believe they're now $150. And every time you take an assessment and you don't pass it, you have to take it again and pay again. Um, that can be cost prohibitive to a minority student with student loans and other expenses. So you'll find, I think, if you look at private schools, they're, um, they tend to have higher minority teachers because they don't require certification. And some of these teachers are phenomenal teachers that they just can't afford the expense of taking a test two or three times over. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and I'll tell you, the middle school humanities test for the history tested us from everything you're not supposed to talk about the tests, but <laughs> it, it was everything from the dawn of humans to what was happening in, I took this test in 2001, 2002, so that's quite a broad range of history, and we don't teach that much history in middle school. Like, the focus should be U.S. history, ancient world, and world geography, not everything in between mm -hmm. so and it didn't give you a uh, opportunity to show mastery in preparing lesson plans and classroom management which are we all know are very fundamentally important thank you
Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other educators have any comments? All right. Um, further discussion amongst ourselves. The only question, thought that I had, and I think Carrie, you may have said it too, but I had tried to find some ex some of the expanded information, and I couldn't find it on the website. So I was trying to dig in a little deeper to understand to get an understanding of exactly what this meant and where, you know, what would be there a replacement criteria? Like, just if you're not going to take these uh, we tests, need, we need the, a new process. Do not get me wrong. Absolutely. Like, I'm very, and, I'm really clear more, with the licensure yes. process. I just, I'm not convinced that, like, the, the, the resolution, I know it was the Arlington School Committee, right? So, yep. but the resolution should have been we're calling for an overhaul to the process and procedure process. by which we license educators mm -hmm. right. and not let's get rid of the test. I'm, I'm just not clear on that connection. That's all. One thing that sort of surprised me is one of the whereas is practicing educators and school committee members are prohibited from serving on the board of elementary and secondary education. Is yeah, that's that true. That, that seems crazy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like to, I don't know, that's, that was, that was, a, a, is it possible to do a sign on that to that part of the resolution? Because um, it's the further resolved part. I'm not sure. <coughs> yeah. Uh, no, I don't think you could. No, you could. You could. You couldn't vote partially. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you vote yeah. for it or against? Yeah. <coughs> uh, so to re to resum up this yes. particular discussion, an affirmative vote and a negative vote. Would you mind repeating for me what exactly one is voting for on, on this on this resolution? Yeah. So if and you were voting in the affirmative, you would be agreeing with this resolution as presented. Got it. And a vote, a nay vote would be saying no, we do not, the Hingham School Committee does not support this resolution number two okay. as written. Yes, Liza. And we could vote or, a third way of just saying going to pass. Yes, I was just going to say, and we also so could make. Because when the delegate is there, they vote yes or no. Mm -hmm. But we could just say, don't even cast a vote, like abstain. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. So um, that was, yes. So because, abstaining I mean, is yeah. also an option. I, I'd also like, I mean, I had a lot of questions about this, but I, the title of this resolution of pertaining to educator diversity, um, I, I mean, I think this is a bigger issue than just educator diversity. And so I, I have my challenges with the way this is worded because it's not just about getting diverse t teachers which is very important right. but it's just about getting good teachers period um, of some of these issues mm -hmm. so um, yeah it's I, I, I'm inclined to just pass um. I sort of had the same takeaway. I was thought, you know, educator diversity is very important, and I know something that we are striving to bring to Hingham, um, and that there is licensure. Some of that is tied to licensure, but not necessarily all of it. And again, I have heard from numerous educators that the process, definitely the way it is today, is not is not conducive to um, to educating today's students and the way of testing teachers and whatnot, um, it's cost prohibitive, it's the content is not always relative to what your actual subject matter is. Um, and so I think I, uh, I'm leaning towards passing on it as well. Should we um, take a vote? Um, are people ready to vote? Yes. All right. So uh, refresh us on your motion. So my motion is to sorry. vote oh. to sorry. vote in Li favor. Sorry, hold on. Sorry, Libby, did you have a question? I'm just feeling like I'm all for stirring things up. <laughs> things need to change. Mm -hmm. Let's change it. And if this is the best that the Arlington School Committee could come up with, then okay. <laughs> and mind that Arlington, Arlington is uh, in a way similar to Hingham, mm -hmm. but uh, has a little more diversity. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it's it, it, 
there's a pros and cons. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of more information, but uh, right. this most definitely would be better than what we have in place. What would be better than what we have in place? This resolution, uh, what's recommended, that would remove some barriers to mm. higher, more diversity into the schools. And that's something that we hear that in Hingham we also have some, um, you know, we don't have enough diversity amongst the um, faculty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking in, in if we if we pass it, if mask passes it, it's not actually going to change the process, but it might help move the conversation forward. True. So I'm in favor. I would want more information if this was actually going to mm -hmm. make concrete change. But to, I think it's worth doing just for that reason. That, that's my yeah. point. Just to put sort of yeah. people more on pressure. notice. Yep. That and put some yeah. Get yeah, the people thinking about it and talking about it more. Right. Um, I know. I just wish that there had been that. Further explanation <laughs> on <laughs> what they talked about. So is that not on their website? No. Information. Gotcha. No. So that's that's my hold up on it. Um, all right. Are do people uh, all feel ready to? Aye. All right. So are people ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. aye. I mean, aye. sorry. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. And hold on a second. And maybe a show of hands if we don't know how many ayes we have. So all in favor? Aye. One, two, three, four. Okay. And um, abstain and three abstains. So the eyes have it. All right. Uh, Ed, number three is yours. The third resolution addresses uh, the issue of school transportation submitted by the Hudson School Committee and apparently was revised by the Resolutions Committee. Uh, I'll follow someone's lead and read you the first <coughs> whereas, whereas the transportation costs concerns for school districts is the lack of competition for bus contracts for regular yellow bus services as well as costs for special education transportation that's followed by nine whereases uh, it's resolved oh and and, and uh, under the under the um, the nine uh, whereases it would appear that mass general laws c71 symbol 7c uh, is essentially being recommended to be uh, uh, reevaluated because this particular um, legislation, uh, according to this resolution, does a number of uh, requirements that are apparently draconian to some, some communities. So it's resolved that in order to promote greater competition for bus service contracts and improve performance, the MASC calls for the creation of a working group to advise the legislature on the best solutions to support greater competition and higher performance from transportation companies. And sorry, I think there's a be it further. And be it further resolved. <laughs> and, be it, oh. and be it further resolved that in order to promote greater competition for bus service contracts, the legislation <laughs> should eliminate the aforementioned Mass General Law uh, item and authorize a deeper analysis into the lack of bidders on school transportation contracts. All right. uh, motion? I'll make a motion that we um, vote in favor of resolution number three, school transportation. I'll second. Carry second, thank you. Any discussion? I would actually be curious to know whether John has any comment on this one, since transportation is his forte. Yeah, uh, I can absolutely say that there's a, a significant lack of competition in school transportation. So, um, you know, any anything they can do to uh, incite more trans more competition into the uh, arena would be certainly beneficial. Um, so. Okay, thank you. Well, um, John, so it also says in this resolution that the elimination of the Chapter 71, Section 7C law would free the school districts and regional transportation authorities to collaborate on plans to provide safe and efficient transportation alternatives that lessen the financial impact on both the districts and the Commonwealth. So are we uh, confined from working with other school districts to collaborate more on I'd have to look at 71C to be, you know, 71 section 7C. Um, 
I certainly collaborate with yeah. the local people in the South Shore, um, and we talk about it all the time and see if there are you know uh, uh, runs that we can do together. Um, the previous the North River Collaborative actually created a collaborative for transportation among many South Shore you know um, uh, districts. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so I'm I'm curious. I I'd, I'd have to go and look at the law, Liza. Uh, to my knowledge, I'm not restricted. And I'm from not accusing you. <laughs> no, no. <from laughs> but, but I think I'm in favor of this because <laughs> it would give us more opportunities to, yeah. You know, right. Work we don't more have really a collaborative together, yeah. but we certainly, um, you know, share and try to, uh, you know, uh, combine runs where we couldn't from yeah. the special edge. If, if a, a surrounding community needs a bus driver or something, I am happy to I help out. I think this out. is related to regular Medco. transportation, but. Um, you think it's more what? I think it's related to regular transportation, but it's sure regular regional. Um, oh, it does say it says yeah, it's both and yeah. as well as cost for yeah. So I just wanted to add that I noticed that you brought up regional because, and I'm just good segue because the same or almost the same resolution was brought up last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was in the minutes from last year's. It's the wording is a slightly different this year, um, but they passed to. Um, promote greater competition and to eliminate that MGLC 717C, which clearly didn't happen if they're having to do it all over again this year. It's like, come on already. <laughs> so, so, so that looks like, from you know, what it says is to certain uses of regional transportation. So, regionals can provide their own transportation. Right. And I think that's what that's saying is they can't provide those transportation services to a general public. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a public school. Right, so they have, may have excess capacity, but they can't provide that service to another school if you're a regional, perhaps. And and I know you know that may be because regionals do get reimbursed for their transportation, mm -hmm. but still, uh, it's not. You, you know, my view is it doesn't make any economic sense not to use assets that are in place for the benefit of everybody in Massachusetts. Yeah. You know, get going beyond my district. If, if I have an asset, why shouldn't I be able to use that if I can be more efficient? Mm -hmm. Even though I'm getting a transportation reimbursement from a regional, why shouldn't I be <coughs> trying to benefit other communities that, you know, have that need? So, right. my own view. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Um, all in favor of resolution number three? Aye. 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 All right. And any no's? All right. Unanimous for number three. Great. Thank you. Uh, Libby. Resolution uh, okay, four. so resolution four is called climate change. And the therefore be it resolved that the Massachusetts Association of School Committee calls on Congress to take swift and effective action on climate change to protect current and future students. Be it further resolved that MASC advocates for funding for school infrastructure need and emergency funding for disaster relief caused by natural catastrophes and extreme weather events. And the rationale for this is, this resolution represents a call by advocates for action on climate change at the federal level and for state funding to anticipate the climatological implications and the emergencies they might cause. Make I'll make a motion that we that we vote in favor loud and clear <laughs> for resolution number four, climate change. Well, I second that. Oh, okay, everybody. Second. All right. Any discussion? Anyone for climate change or not? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, <laughs> any discussion on this one? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the ayes have it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Um, Let me be noted that I abstained. Oh, you did abstain. Thank you. Sorry. And Liza, do you want to do number five? Five is the full funding of transportation costs for students in foster care and state care. Um, and the resolved is that the Commonwealth yeah. should fully reimburse transportation funding for children in foster care and state care. Um, DCF, Department of Children and Families, and 
DESE, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, must complete the process to provide proper documentation for the Commonwealth to receive reimbursement for transportation expenses under the Title IV-E of the Social Security Act. Be it further resolved that MASC advocate uh, the that MASC advocate the Massachusetts General Court to properly calculate and assume the full expense of providing educational services to students in foster care and state care, including the costs of assessments, regular day, and special education services, as well as out of district placements, transportation, and mental health services. The rationale is because the foster care population is fluid, it is difficult for a school district to budget properly for unexpected transportation costs of students in foster care or state custody. Direct and full funding of transportation will remedy these problems while equitably and accurately allocating costs. The state auditor notes the Commonwealth's failure to provide funding for the transportation of foster care students may be an unfunded mandate under the local mandate law. This is a similar situation to that of the McKinney-Vento finding by Auditor Bump in 2011-2012. As the requirement is tied to federal funding under Title I, the need to provide transit to these students means this could potentially be a requirement passed by the state to local districts without offsetting funding. Massachusetts received over $220 million in Title I Part A grants in each of the fiscal years 2016, 17, and 18. While the reimbursement only offers a portion of the funds expended, it could help offset some of the expenses incurred by school districts to comply with state and federal laws. We applaud DCF and DESE for the effort underway to modify the federal plan to allow for reimbursement to Massachusetts for expenses incurred by school districts. This resolution explicitly recognizes that, quote, education expenses, unquote, include all education-related costs associated with the imposition of federal requirements and the decision-making of the Department of Children and Families, DCF, regarding each foster child's residential situation. Direct state funding of these services will allow for a more accurate allocation of funds to affected communities. Funding from the state will also lessen the administrative time lost by central office staff trying <coughs> to determine the district financially responsible for each student and seeking reimbursements after the fact. Estimated total costs, less the estimated existing payments, would net to approximately $56 million annually. More accurate data on student placements would sharpen this estimate. So I'll, make a a, I'll make a motion that we vote in favor of resolution number five, full funding of transportation cost, costs for students in foster care and state care. Second. Carry second. All right. Discussion? Questions, comments, anything from the administration? No? Yes, this is a big deal. Yeah, this is a big deal. And there's an outcry uh, statewide uh, for them to change this. So. Yes. Um, all right, uh, people ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All right, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstains or dissensions? No? All right, unanimous. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Carlos, your number six and seven, I think, yes. Yep. Resolution number six, universal quality um, pre-kindergarten access in Massachusetts. This uh, resolution is a reaffirmation of the 2014 resolution submitted by the Framingham School Committee. Again, this is uh, some, some uh, a resolution that was already, you know, uh, submitted. Um, so this calls for, um, for the Massachusetts Association of School Committee to file or support legislation that will provide a sufficient appropriation for universal pre-K in Massachusetts and we will achieve the actions necessary to provide access to good quality universal pre-K for all children in Massachusetts. The rationale on this is that this resolution would help ensure that our underserved, underserved population of three to four years, four year old 
will be provided with the supports and services necessary for school readiness and lasting success in the classroom for the future for future success. Knowing that these strategies are documented in increasing the student success, our, our resolution will level the playing, uh, the playing uh, field by helping to ensure equity and, and beginning the process of closing the achievement gap for this vulnerable cohort of, of children. Does someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Yeah, um, I'll make a motion to um, <clears throat> to vote affirmatively on Resolution 6, Universal, universal Quality Pre-Kindergarten Access in Massachusetts. Okay. I'll second. I'll second, all right. Uh, any discussion? Comments? Questions? All, right. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstains? Great, that is opposed, I mean, approved as well. Re Carlos, number seven. Re resolution seven, Poverty and Children. Again, this is another resolution that was submitted in 2015, and this is just a reaffirmation, uh, and it was submitted by the Framingham School Committee. Um, essentially, this is uh, sorry, it's be resolved. Right. Yeah, it be resolved that the Massachusetts Association of School Committee will prioritize, <coughs> as a matter of its public policy agenda, the file for and support legislation to support the eradication of poverty among children in Massachusetts and advocate for social and economic justice for students and their families that we will include. Support for a revenue stream that supports social and economic priorities for children and families. Support the state program and services that serve children at the greatest social and emotional risk, which are easily accessible to students and families. Advocacy for nutrition programs that eradicate hunger among children. Advocacy for health care, including vision, hearing, dental, and me mental health through accessible service providers. Support for pre-kindergarten programs for all children advocacy for increasing um, educa educational pr opportunities for children to grow both inside and outside of the school. And this, the rationale behind this is that this resolution would help ensure that our underserved population of school children will, will be provided with the support and services necessary, necessary for lasting success in the classroom and in their future. Knowing that by eliminating the ravages of poverty, poverty, these strategies have been proven to increase positive student outcomes. This resolution will level the playing field by helping to ensure equity and close the achievement gap for the vulnerable cohort of children. Thank you. Okay, so I'll make a motion to uh, vote in the affirmative on Resolution 7, Poverty and Children. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstains or nays? All right, unanimous. Great, thank you. All right, uh, last two. Resolution number eight uh, I will read is a resolution for access to menstrual supplies. This is submitted by the Ma uh, Massachusetts Association of School Committee Resolutions <coughs> Committee. <coughs> Therefore, be it resolved that Massachusetts Association of School Committees work with state and federal legislators to provide additional funding to provide free access to menstrual products from the school nurse and in restrooms and locker rooms. The rationale, proponents assert that menstrual supplies are basic necessities which some students may not have on hand in school and at any particular moment or may not be able to afford in general. They view these items, similar to other products found in nurses' office or in restrooms, as basic essential commodities for everyday use that should be available to all students without charge. Um, can somebody, want to, someone want to make a motion? I will. I'll make a motion we'll to you. Thank you. vote in the affirmative for Resolution 8, Resolution for Access to Menstrual Supplies. Thank you. A second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
any opposed or all right thank you and the last but not least resolution number nine charter school reform um, submitted by the Massachusetts Association of School Committee Board of Directors Therefore, be it resolved that the Massachusetts, of Massachusetts Association of School Committees seek legislative action to both address the deleterious effects of charter school funding on certain municipalities and school districts across the state and to prove a comprehensive set of reforms that include, <coughs> there's quite a few, one, establishment of strict guidelines or regulations to require that charter schools enroll representative cross-sections of students residing within the school service area, Two, reporting of accurate numbers of students who leave charter schools to return to the sending districts or district of residence. Three, requiring the Mass Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to retain and report accurate data on enrollment of students with learning disabilities, physical disabilities, economic disadvantage, emotional disability, and status as racial and linguistic minorities. For state requirements that all charter schools be funded in full by the Commonwealth rather than by expropriation of Chapter 70 education aid from the sending city, town, and regions. Five, state funding in full of any mitig mitigation funds created to offset the loss of state funding for students who become students in charter schools. The rationale for this is this resolution addresses several areas where charter school critics note that school districts are disadvantaged by current policy. Among these issues are failure to recruit <laughs> and retain a fair proportion of students at risk, English language learners, or clients of special education services. The resolution also recommends that charter schools should be funded as a discrete budget line item rather than by, have, by having the sending district chapter 70 funding diverted to charter schools and that the current mitigation mitigation program to offset temporary losses of district funds be fully funded. Critics of this resolution may argue that the money follows the child and that charter schools represent choice for parents and students. They might also cite efforts by some charter schools to recruit students at risk. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll um, make a motion to vote in the affirmative on resolution 9 charter school reform. Thank you. And a second? I'll second. Carlos. All right. Any Get a minute for a question? discussion? Sure. Does anyone know, is this a new, has this issue been addressed previously? I didn't you, see it for a, last year. You what? I didn't see it in last you year's minutes, right. like I did the transportation one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And it doesn't the, say that it was, and some of the others yeah. have mentioned. I mean, that there have been other resolutions regarding this, charter schools, the, yeah. but I think this is very specific about the ongoing issues of charter schools and particularly as it relates to the public districts and with the money and of charter schools not educating all students equally um, and you know when students come back to a district it's, it's ongoing challenges mm -hmm. for many districts. Yes. Any other questions, comments on this one? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any declines or nays or abstentions? No. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. All nine of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your. Pass bylaws. Um, I don't. I think we need to do that. There's still no explanation here, so. No, it doesn't. Um, uh, I didn't see the, uh, for the It's at the end. There's a proposal to amend the mask bylaws. Um, I don't the know. assumption would be that Carlos would be asked to vote on this on. Yes. Um, but it is interesting that they didn't ask you to. Do you, you don't you don't know Carlos? Um, no, I don't know anything about this. So Actually. then, all right. So there's at the bottom of thank you, Dr. Austin. Um, at the bottom of the <coughs> part of your packet where the um, resolutions were included, there's a proposal to amend the mask bylaws. Um, do we want to, we can take five minutes to read it and 
then vote what we, if we agree with their proposed language, um, or we could just allow Carlos to just make an executive decision <laughs> on behalf of the committee and be our delegate at the, at the meeting. Thoughts, folks? Do we want to allow Carlos to just serve as our representative and be the delegate and delegate the authority to him for the proposed change? Yes. Well, five minutes isn't, isn't a lot of time. Okay. All right. Let's read it. We'll, less than five minutes. Read this and then we'll give Carlos our feedback. teacher all of a sudden. <laughs> Pencils down everyone when you're done. Let me know when you're done and you're finished reading. But could I do that? I, <laughs> the phone's away. <laughs> I've just dated myself horribly. <laughs> Um, so it look the, so this no, is the, a the proposal to amend the mass bylaws to looks like add a, a past president to serve as a non-voting chair of the nominating committee, and then to have five members um, rather than it look like four um, members and five division officers and the five others shall be so appointed that each division is represented. Um, are people supportive of the? Proposed language. All right. So, a motion to accept the. I make a motion to accept the proposed uh, to amend the Massachusetts Association of School Committee bylaws. Thank you. Carry second. All right. Any discussion? What is if it's five? To, if it's to be five and five, what is it now? It's now ten. It's now ten. It's to yeah, ten. It's so just eight. defining the, what the ten is. Yes. I don't like an even number. Oh, yes. But it does look like it's 10 well, now, and they're just sort of. Before. Yeah, yeah. So now the past president will serve as a non voting chair, and then there'll be 10, uh, there'll be 10 total. Well, then they're, for, they're, they're forced to come to a majority. So it's an or even not. number. Sure. Or not. Well, then they, they have no nominations to put forward. So it force, when you have an even number, it forces Plus you to yeah. find a solution. If you have an odd, then you can always have mm -hmm. an easy, simple majority. True. True. Uh, Libby, I do you have a question? question? Yeah. How does how does adding the past president as a non-voting chair reflect the addition of the minority caucus representative? I mean, that's what it says. The purpose of this change is like the addition of the minority caucus representative. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Um, so the update to reflect the addition <laughs> of the minority caucus representative. So <laughs> well you caucus. you remove the past president position where did, where did to be the, uh, the non voting chair of the committee and you open up another yeah. position the so middle. that yeah, the middle. minority middle. caucus oh. person, uh, can, person can be added. Can have, I, okay. Can be one of the, the people. Okay. All right. Let's make sure we have you. All right. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Liza. Everyone? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. Now, moving on to item 6.4, to review and discuss a proposal for policy manual development for Massachusetts Association of School Committee and act as appropriate. Carrie, do you want 
Sure. Walk us through this. Um, so the policy, since um, this committee started in this, and, and since uh, Dr. Austin came on, we've been discussing um, our policies and um, the MASC policy surveys and, and their sample policies and how to bring them cl closer into alignment. And we talked about a number of d different ways to do it. Um, at our last policy <coughs> committee meeting on October 30th, um, on Dr. Austin's recommendation, we, the subcommittee, agreed to propose engaging the MASC policy contract service to the full committee to review and recommend revisions to our, um, our school policies. Um, and the proposed contract for that is in everyone's packet. Um, the thinking behind it is uh, policy is one of our three responsibilities in the school committee and we want to make sure we have policies in place that support our student achievement, support our staff and protect the district. Um, the mask policies are vetted by attorneys and they're consistent with, um, with uh, districts across the Commonwealth. Um, unlike most of our benchmark towns, uh, our policy manual is not aligned with the National School Board Association or the mask policies, and that makes it difficult to track uh, changes and to make sure we have everything we need. Um, and one thing we learned um, as we've did, been digging into this is policy doesn't just live in the policy manual, it's in the contracts, it's in um, student employee handbooks, it's in student handbooks, and we want to make sure that all those things are aligned. So what MASK would do is come in and look at all of those things and make sure they're consistent um, and make sure we have what we need and put it into the, um, the format that pretty much everybody uses. <laughs> um, and that, that should make sure that we have everything we need and that they're consistent. Um, so it's not cheap. Um, it's ten thousand five hundred dollars for the service. Um, it is broken up over three years, so it's not like we have to find that amount in the budget um, th for this year. Um, and I wanted to make it clear too: we're not going to lose Hingham in the new policies. We can keep anything we want, and any changes that um, that are proposed have to be approved by the school committee to begin with. So we can keep anything we like in our current policies. Right. Well, and also on the costs, we had talked about having our new law firm do the same service, but we recognized that that cost could be even more than this um, Probably would because be. <laughs> MASC has done this transition for other communities and has a system in place in order to do it. Right. Um, so, and we started doing it ourselves and realized it was just way too yeah. burdensome. <laughs> um, so yeah. that was mm -hmm. another aspect of the, the costs. Mm -hmm. right. Made sense, especially since it's over the three years. What if we don't? Um, I mean, if we don't, there's the there's some risk to that, right? There's some risk that we don't follow even our own policies, or that our policies are out of compliance with the state or other requirements. Um, I think back to like even just the public comment things that have changed since we started, right? And you could find yourself out of compliance with the law um, if you're not getting sort of regular updates to this. So this would mean, if we don't do it, then that means that, you know, the policy subcommittee has to be understanding every single change in law, DESE requirements, um, anything that affects policy that we would have to be on that immediately to know that it needs to be changed. Right, and not just the policy manual, the handbooks, and the, the handbook. contracts, um, everything. Well, by belonging to the <coughs> Massachusetts Society of School Committees, do we not get updates when there's something that's changed? We do get updates, and if we had our fire policies were aligned with their samples, it would be really easy to, to you know to s slip it in there or to to update it. The way it is now, we have a completely different format, and and so it's really hard to know where exactly it fits. We're also missing a a lot of policy that is yeah. recommended or required by law in the Commonwealth that we don't have uh, or that we can't easily find, we can't match necessarily what we do have. So this would put you in line with the National Association of School Boards as they're recommended and, and the Commonwealth's uh, laws and regulations regarding the operations of schools. So there are many policies that are missing. You're right, uh, Dr. Ed, we, as new policies come in or we revise things, we pull off from the National Association of School Boards and MASC site and we, we create policies uh, for that purpose now, but the, that work is pretty extensive over um, the, the amount of policy that we already have. I think the answer to what if we don't, we run the risk of not being, uh, it was already said, in compliance with law and the way that, uh, and managing things the way we should through policy. How this came about? Oh. 
Well, we, were, like, we recognize that, because um, we've all looked at the mask, um, to the templates, um, there have th been things like the public speak policy that have come up that we realize we don't have or, we, or we're out of compliance. So we, we kind of looked at, well, what's the best way to bring us into, to, do, to do our jobs? You know, not doing it, it's, it's kind of penny-wise, pound-foolish, mm -hmm. because, um, because we're, we are open to uh, complaints or, oh, thank you, know, thank you. Yeah, so, so, so this is so, uh, something that the policy uh, identified? Mm-hmm, yep. so we, you know, Yeah, we talked about ways we could do it internally, too, and it's, I don't think anyone's opposed to doing the work. Um, it was actually kind of fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's, we, want, we have to make sure we get everything, and we're not experts in this, but MASC is. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me add, oh. Ed, this is not about our policies become the template of right. what MASC represents. It, we can have our own policy of something that we believe is important to just hang them. We can, and th it would just be categorized by a standard national basis and statewide basis. Um, we can also edit the policies to enhance them, to make them more appropriate to hang them, add to them. But we're getting, we, we want to get our base to be consistent with, and the Massachusetts, the MASC policies are based on the National School Board Association policies as well, um, so that we have a baseline of standard operating procedures of all school districts, but then we can have the flexibility of still tailoring it to our own. That's part of this process, um, to your point, Liza. A policy that we may have that we like it, would they be able to review and and, and yeah, and then they make keep recommendations? It. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. If we should change a couple of words in there mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Yeah. And they meet like ten times or something like that. I forget what the number was, but. But they do the, the leg work. The they do all the data yeah. entry and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, I I was on the policy subcommittee last year, and I think. One of the big risks is I think sometimes we don't know what we don't know, right? Like, what are we missing that we don't even know that we're missing? And then the second piece was, I mean, Dr. Labilwa spent an inordinate amount of time last year with some of the policies that needed to be um, revised or reconsidered. And I think it takes up a fair amount of administrative work to review policies, discuss with legal counsel, get them done. So, I mean, all of that has a cost to it as well, not just the actual legal cost that we're paying to a law firm to review it hourly versus a fixed cost, but also time taken away from the running of the day-to-day -day operations of the district and focus on student achievement. So, um, and, um, just also, add, as what we're going to get to later in the agenda, these policies about negotiating. Um, we follow these negotiating practices now and these laws. We just don't have a policy stating that this is how we conduct our negotiations. And these came out of these standard policies. So that's kind of an example of how we can update our policy manual of having appropriate policies to state to the community of this is how we operate, um, but, and we are operating in that way. So it's just c coming into compliance and making sure we have a policy of everything that we're doing. So that's a, an example of something we found mm -hmm. when we were started reviewing things and we realized uh, it's be more efficient mm -hmm. to use the service. I guess one question for John would be, um, how would how where does where do, where would the funds come from for something like this? Is it the school committee line item? Yeah, for thirty three hundred dollars, we we have room in it in the regular budget. You know, we cut supplies or I mean that's it's not a significant amount of money, and next year we could budget for it, so we'd be fine to expend it this, you know, expend the thirty three hundred dollars this year. Is that thirty three or thirty five? Five. You know. Um, One thing with them too, you know, there is a note there that they would be willing to accommodate, you know, adjust according to your budget. 
mm -hmm. if this this schedule doesn't work. Right, right. Yeah. Was this a, an extended payment plan, and, and what's the time frame to get us our our new uh, binder? July, July, July one, twenty twenty one. It's one hundred and twenty days. They meet. I think within the time that they get our policies, they have one hundred and twenty days to. I, I, I'm just reading that real quick, Ed. Um, it's eighteen to twenty four months. For the whole process, for the whole but they process, have because the, they go back and forth with us. Right. But based on this, they propose to end July first of twenty twenty one. Am I correct? 120 yeah. days is that first one that they get back to us. Barring no delays yep. that are caused by the school committee. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, Libby, make sure they move fast. <laughs> like we could get accepted by the MSBA. We have to address foster issues immediately and a delay. <laughs> We're going to try it very Thank hard. Thank you not. positively. <laughs> In that case, I don't mind yeah. the delay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any thoughts from the administration other than what you've already stated? No, I just fully support being able to do that and, and bring us in line with the National School Boards Association and um, to serve us well. Okay. And John, you don't see a. Yeah, no, I, th I think it's a good idea. To get us, you know, standard. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I mean, we have good policies and procedures now, I think, but, you know, to get ourselves standard, and we do, you do get the ability to modify, so, and, you know, to cater to your own district, so I think it's a good idea. Thank you, Jamie. The, the only question I have that we're going to sort of work to f get clarity on is whether. They're also going to address the uh, regulations and exhibits. So, so there is a connection. That, well, the committee has oversight of policy. The procedures and regulations then outline the way that policy is to be implemented. And so it's unclear from my initial reading whether they're addressing the policy, right? Or are they also addressing the, because that's an administrative um, task, right? Is to then rewrite all the procedures and regulations. So you might have a new policy on, um, uh, I don't know, um, I'm trying to think of what, field trips. But then the exhibit A is the application for the, see what I'm getting at? It's like the, 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 all the pieces that flow behind the policy. And so I think um, working with Mass to overhaul the manual is an excellent idea. I would just want to be sure when you're paying that amount of, that kind of money, you're also getting associated regulations and exhibits and, or support relative to the development of those. Right. So um, we have, part of the issue you cu we currently have is we have a policy manual that sits over here, as Pam knows well, and then we have the procedure manual that sits over here when really they should be living together. When you read the policy, it should then say, then see attached regulations or E1, Exhibit 1, or regular, you see what I'm getting at? And so mm -hmm. I'm not, that makes I'm sense. Just, that, my only question was yeah. whether when they do that work, if they do the whole thing or if they just do the policies. Mm -hmm. We can follow up on that. Yeah, we can follow, sure. yeah. follow up on that. Because right. yeah. well, the well, manual, well. when you get the manual, it actually has suggested regulations and exhibits. But, but you ask about it. You would prefer that they, that is part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And so that's so, so that's right. then so what it gets updated in, in terms of procedure and practice. And yeah. Do we know if they do that? Have we ever seen an example of them providing procedure when we've gotten policy updates from them? Do you know? They d they don't provide. They, they don't provide, provide the procedure recommendation. They don't provide the procedures. Yeah. But some of their policies are more detailed, and so yeah. they have these procedures sort of built. Their policies are more lengthy and more detailed than ours. That's have that been. is a fair point. <coughs> yeah. And so some of it, there's an overlap, mm -hmm. I think, a little and bit. And in part of their, I'm just reading the ex Exhibit A. So they talk about things that we have to provide the, that, to them for putting together the the policy, so it says current documents or handbooks that cover organization charts, school transportation, field trips, <laughs> staff evaluation, emergency operating plans, school calendars, school facilities, etc. So it does sound like they do pull that in to the work that they're doing. They call right. them regulations, right. though. And 
And there is another section where, sorry, it's. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I don't yeah. want to, I'm, I'm not uh, putting any damper on I'm just no, thoughtful no. about yep. the whole piece of the right. Absolutely. process. I'm just saying okay. under performance tasks, it says legal references to printing state and federal expense. statutes mm -hmm. will be added as mm -hmm. well. So I don't know if that's <coughs> true. So, okay. Um, well, it sounds like we're going to spend the money anyway, whether it's with mask or whether it's with right. the new attorney. And mm -hmm. going with mask is more economical than going with the new attorney, who will have to be starting from scratch. Or they may even have, have the mask policies themselves and be using the same thing and then be charging us for it. So, so because I just right. read that they <laughs> right. reserve the right to terminate uh, the contract, I would also um, recommend that you get a timeline in reverse chronological order from them of the expectations of when do I give you this, when do you expect mm -hmm. us to um, review and approve on now end, you know what I mean? So that way you have that going in um, and, you know, that, that way we don't delay on now end. That's a good idea. Yeah, get a timeline of events. That was very helpful with uh, working with uh, the organization to hire the superintendent. Mm -hmm. Yep. Alright. Uh, so we need uh, to act on this. Um, folks ready to act on this tonight? Yeah. yeah? Alright. Do you want to make a motion, Carrie? Okay. Um, I make a motion to um, accept the proposal for um, the mask um, policy um, service um, to um, to update our policy manual. Subject to some clarification? Yep, subject to clarifications around the procedures and regulations and um, the timeline of when they will need um, the documents. I'll second that. Um, any discussion? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Still on policy. Um, <laughs> section 6.5 to receive and discuss proposed new policy 3.1.1 negotiation goals. And this is a first reading, so no action tonight. We're just going to hear a draft. Uh, Carrie, do you want to do these? Sure. Okay. Um, just as Liza had said earlier, um, these are these are recommended by uh, Mask, and because we're entering a negotiation year, we thought it would be good to um, to put them into practice. As she said. Um, well, these are practices that we already follow, um, so it's not, they're not huge changes, but um, it's just putting them in, into the manual. And I don't know, do you have anything else to add on that, Liza? Um, no, I think that, that covers it. Um, there, I mean, I can, so goals, we've all talked about that, um, having the best possible educational opportunities for students is, what um, is important <coughs> to us. Um, and then I'll just go on to the next agenda items if, or, I mean, uh, so goals is, and as an example, um, in the mask policies, oh, many of their policies begin, sections begin with goals and stating what's the goal, of, what's the purpose of having these policies, um, which we, have it as a sentence in some of our policies, but we don't have it as sort of a preface of the whole section. Um, so that's what this is. Okay. So the 3.11 is the negotiations goals. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and then do you want to do the other ones in? As the next one is the negotiations yeah, yeah. legal status. Yeah. Um, wait a minute, I just clicked too fast and got back in my yep. folder. Right here. There we go. Um, um, so then 3.12 is negotiations legal status, which covers that negotiations between um, for a school committee and any recognized employee groups or unions is covered subject to Massachusetts general laws. Um, 
as um, defined in Section 2 of those laws, um, and that we'll, we will follow those laws, and we will follow the concept of bargaining in good faith. Okay. And then 3.13 3 is regarding school committee negotiating agents. Um, and that is outlining that the school committee can hire a negotiator um, or multiple people to assist us with the bargaining. Um, this is one example where the mask policy just had single negotiator and we noted in some other districts um, policies that they added the S and we've had that case in the past and we thought that was a good idea. So that's an <laughs> example of how we are modifying what the proposed um, policies are for masks. Okay. Um, Thank you. All right. All right. So this was just a first reading tonight, and then yeah. we'll bring them back <coughs> to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. That's okay. good. Can, can I right. ask a question now? Or mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So it's Absolutely. about um, 3.1.2 negotiations legal status. Um, <coughs> it, the quote in the middle shall have the right of self organization. There's no subject in that sentence like who shall have the right of self-organization I'm um, school committee. Uh, let's see wait. this is under uh, I, I presume that this is starting under the school committee session mm -hmm. right so it's yeah committee. well it comes from uh, from a law of the mass general laws so we can look and find the subject and is this like did you just like copy and paste from masks for this one, yes. This is how, yeah, that's how it's written. The association, the workers, the workers' right to union yes. to organize. I mean, that's how I would interpret yes. it. Yeah. No, to your point, it should be it's clear in the yeah, it's right clear in there. Yes, we need to add. I would change that because it goes on to talk about collectively bargaining um, of their own choosing on wages, hours, yeah. Or go back to section two, Massachusetts general laws. And yeah, so see when we say. have our policy subcommittee meeting before our next school committee meeting, yeah. you <laughs> will come with your proposed edits after having read the law, Libby. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so <laughs> <you> next time. <laughs> gave myself that homework. Like yeah. 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 <laughs> That'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> you are right. I, agree. <laughs> I look forward to seeing what you're proposing. <laughs> Thanks, Liza. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, homework. All right. Um, any other questions or suggested edits for this first round? No? Okay. All right. All right, um, then let's move on to 6.8, which is to receive and discuss proposed revisions to policy 6.2 age requirements. This is also a first reading. Um, Carrie, do you want to? Sure, yeah. Take that one too? Um, so these are some proposed edits that we had. Um, the goal was really to um, clarify the entrance age at, for kindergarten. Um, our current policy states that students entering kindergarten must be five years old on or before August 31st, and students entering grade one must be six on or before August 31st of that year. Um, we, re we made we proposed some revisions to clarify um, the language that, as a general rule, five-year-olds are expected to be enrolled in kindergarten, and six-year-olds are expected to be enrolled in first grade, and that parents uh, with concerns about their students' readiness should go speak to the principal of the elementary school where their child will attend. Um, and then the one change that we made in this came, this we did adopt some of the MASC um, language was um, that the proposed revisions, um, let's see, the admissions with, of students with birthdays after August 31st will be solely at the school's discretion. 
Um, and the reason we were proposing that is um, in our current policy states it's generally in the best interests of individual students as well as the um, class as a whole to have classes within a reasonable chronological and developmental range. Um, so that's what we were proposing and I was thinking about this further and wanted to add something but does anyone have any questions to this point? To the, the, my only question is this essentially would satisfy um, all the issues that we heard in the, in the last couple of years? Um, I think with some other things, I was going to address that in a second, but yeah. A uh, question. So yeah. Number two, the admission shall be s solely at the school's discretion. Mm -hmm. Do we mean the principal's discretion? Because uh, I remember okay. talking about the principal yeah, before. We so yeah, principals. Yeah. yeah we, we could change. We could make that change that for sure. Is yeah. That appropriate. I, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Okay. And then the other thing I was thinking um, is we may want to consider um, uh, adding some language directing the superintendent to develop a procedure for the principals to follow when they speak with parents of con uh, concerned parents and when they make decisions about the proper enrollment for kids just so that it's, e it's even across the buildings and then they have something to turn to um, when they make those decisions. So we can add some language, if uh, depending on how people feel about that. I'm, I'm, I'm all in favor. Of, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's right. Sorry. I just I think in item two, I feel like, and I just realized what it's bothering me about that sentence. It's not really the admission of the children. Is it? Isn't it really more of the appropriate enroll, like the yeah. enrollment in the class, because they're going to be admitted to the Enroll school. Yeah, enrollment. It's enrollment yeah. rather than admission, right? Yeah. Enrollment in which grade, correct? Right. All right. I don't want to and I guess my only other thought on that is, is that, I guess, I, I guess I'm just wondering whose discretion that should be at, if it's the building principal or the superintendent. I don't know if that's a lot to put on the building principal who will have a relationship <laughs> with families for a long time that that might feel like yeah. you know or they or they I don't know I don't know if that's a superintendent decision or a principal or, or if it could be more district leadership decision I think the idea of putting of having the superintendent develop a process was supposed to, is similar okay. to kind of to, yeah okay kind of, you know scaffold what the principals are doing and, got it and okay give them tools that makes sense okay I can see that but you can also have the superintendent or uh, his or her designee yeah and the principal yep. is right yeah that. yeah, yeah. Okay. that would address that uh, I guess that I have a problem with that sentence like whose birthdays fall after August 31st everybody's birthday falls after August 31st I don't like for, in this, uh, for the calendar year for the school year for the whole at the age when they reach a certain age of the school year we can take the language from number one um, August 31st of the school year mm -hmm. and maybe in the second and line would it be clear to say the enrollment of children whose fifth birthdays fall. Yep. Is that what you're trying to get at? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Six, yeah, okay. Yeah. Your fifth birthday. I just think it's you know awful. what I mean? Just c I'd carry the same structure to number two. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Carrie, are you proposing that that, that the superintendent's uh, pr protocol or whatever would be part of this policy or just that not, not something to add no. to the policy, mm -hmm. but just something that we are asking? superintendent to do I was going to add to our policy the, the school the school committee directs the superintendent to develop a set of proce a process or procedures or however we're going to word it um, to guide principals as they speak to parents we can we can work we could wordsmith it but that was the policy would be directing the superintendent okay. to do that okay, okay. so they task. have one uniform policy yeah Mm -hmm. across all the five schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts for this particular first reading? Okay. All right. 
Thank you. Should, should, they, um, should they say it? All right, so we are down to 6.9 to receive notification of the overnight field trip of the DECA Business Club of the Hingham High School on December 12th to 13th. This is the second year, um, consecutive year, that the club is making this trip um, down to the Cape. Anybody have any questions about this? Okay, what does DECA stand for? Who somebody was going to ask that? <laughs> I know. It's right in there. It's like it's on the the red folder has the the answer. And the answer is nobody knows. No, I thought it, I thought it explained it here. Yes, yeah. it's the Decca Business. Okay, whatever. The Decca Business Club. What is it? There's the lies is the Google master. Distributive Education, Education Clubs of America. Yeah. Yes. Or that's formally. Wait. Wait. Well, that's yes. Oh, what is Awkward. DECA Business Club? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a business club. It's a club. It's a club. <laughs> 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 this is the, how uh, you slyly Google, it's a club at the high school. Um, what? All right, but other than what DECA stands for, does anybody have any questions or concerns about this trip? All right, uh, I never can remember. Are we receiving notification or are we approving these? Right? I think it's just receiving. We don't have to vote on this, I don't think. I no, it's just you get notification. That's okay, all right, so we are hereby notified of the field trip. Check. Um, but we will find out for you, Libby. Now I'm committed to finding out what it means. Oh, we, 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 she we Googled it already. We're good. Distributive Education Clubs of America Business Club. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Item 6.10 uh, to receive and discuss revisions to the 2000, uh, sorry, the 2019 2020 uh, school committee special reports calendar. So these were, these reflect, thank you, Pam, the changes that we made at our last school committee meeting. Um, to include our workshop meetings um, that we are setting up. So I, the, the changes to the calendar, the special reports calendar are in red there. So um, just Michelle, make a note. Can I just yeah. make, on the February 24th, um, when we say adjourn to workshop for superintendents NSIP report, can that say, I, I thought we were going to hear the report in the formal session and then go into the workshop to discuss it and discuss the outcomes of it. You okay. are correct. And yes, I think. So if we can so add the word discussion, discussion yeah, add discussion to it because that's a really important report to have yeah. as a part of a formal meeting. Yes. So we'll have the superintendent uh, the NISIP, NSIP report, Discussion. and then they'll then they'll do a that'll be included in the so it'll be formal budget, the superintendent's NSIP report, and then adjourn to the workshop, which will not be discuss uh, televised for discussion about the NSIP for, yeah, report. Yeah. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, any other? comments on the calendar or as revised okay great thank you um, item 6.11 in your packets are notifications of several appointments Michelle, I'm so sorry that is okay um, to back up yep the foster yeah um, November 18th no sorry December 18th or 19th the uh, I just noticed on the 19th of December there's a, a concert mm -hmm band and orchestra concert at the high school. I don't know if that would be a big enough over, uh, thing to not have that happen. I would I would go to the concert personally. Um, but it's okay. If I'm I no, that's okay. I apologize because I just do not remember why we had the 18th or the 19th. What's the I timing? Think that was just the, the, the dates that were thrown out was either the 18th or the 19th. Um, <coughs> I think the 16 remains, right? Do we want to say tentative on that? Just no, it's the, it's, it's the 16. The 16th what? It's a Monday. Right. That's the, the night we're looking to have the meeting. But I think we, well, we will have a meeting that night, but then we want to have a workshop to talk about what we learned. 
to digest <coughs> everything, oh. right? Because we all have gotten notification. The second meeting to do then the workshop to talk about the Exactly. So, um, and given that that was a, the regularly scheduled meeting was a pretty big meeting because we get the college board testing and the placement, like that'll be a big meeting. If, if we need it, we were saying we would have another, we would schedule another meeting to workshop mm. foster school. Um, so, I mean, we don't need to decide now. I'm, I'm just pointing that out. There's a conflict. I don't okay. know if it's a big enough one to. Can we say yeah, tentative? I, till yeah, we could we, say tentative the 18th. What day is that? A Wednesday? Yeah. So we'll say tentatively December 18th. Okay. And if we have to move to the 19th, we will. Okay. Spell now. And we can still say 18 and 19th. It's one of L's. Like, that's a lot of long right. strokes. Yeah. Anything else on that one? All right. Um, okay, 6.11 was as to receive um, several appointments, and 6.12 is to receive notification of uh, resignation of a paraeducator. Um, any, item number seven, any 48 hour items? Administration? Committee <coughs> no? Audience no? All right. Um, subcommittee and project reports. Uh, you know what? I'll just go. Each member can update us on whatever's going on in their sphere. Sure. Ness, do you have anything? Yep. Uh, East, we had our first school council meeting on October 23rd, went through the school improvement plan. Um, the They started talking about their focus group that they do annually. They've done it for a few years now. Uh, they send out surveys to the parents each year to assess the needs and what's working well. Um, they're discussing the best way to send out the surveys. And then those surveys will lead into the focus group discussions, will, which will happen in January. Our next meeting is November 20th. Uh, they have a PTO meeting on November 13th <coughs> at 9.30. Um, some fun stuff, I guess. We've got a fruit center, a fundraiser, and book fair this week. Um, hobby night is Wednesday night. And then for the first time, they're doing a social for the parents on November 15th. Um, then community outreach, we have our meeting tomorrow. Um, METGO, I think you had mentioned it, <coughs> Michelle, they've got um, a, a, a feast, a Thanksgiving feast coming up. I'm unfortunately not going to be able to attend, but it looks like a lot of fun yes. on November 15th. Um, and that is going to be in the city. So um, that's all that I have. Long range planning, we have our next meeting scheduled. Great. Um, sorry, I, re I just want to check something. Sorry, I feel like the Metco potluck may be the 14th. So I just, since we're on camera, I just want to make sure it is the 14th, Thursday the 14th. Is it? Okay, so yeah. I have it here. It's it's at the Teen Center, Yep. St. Peter Parish, um, oh, the 14th, you're right. I was thinking Thursday, and I said the 15th. Okay. Thursday, November 14th. Um, bring a dish, try a dish. It's from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And thank that's you. in Dorchester. Yes. Um, thank you. <coughs> and then Libby. Um, okay, uh, so as um, Ness pointed out, the Community Outreach Committee is to be um, scheduled, rescheduled a couple of times, and so it, now it is on for tomorrow <coughs> at 2.30. And um, I attended the South School uh, School Council meeting, and um, the big deal for South School this year is just that it's their 20th anniversary in this building, and so they're, uh, I've got a number of things going on to celebrate that, and um, they're going to kick it off on November 8th with their Veterans Day celebration. It's an assembly in the morning. Um, they're also putting together a time capsule, and they are creating a quilt. So it's all very exciting for South Schools. <coughs> and the next school council meeting is November 20th. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Liza? Um, salary negotiations will cover an executive session. And for the master plan committee, the focus right now is on the visioning sessions and public input. So the general public, there are sessions on November 18th in the morning at Town Hall, November 20th in the evening at Town Hall, and November 23rd, which is a Saturday, 
here at Town Hall um, in the middle of the day, and refreshments will be served at all of them. So we encourage people to pick one to attend. Um, and then we will be doing <coughs> um, visioning sessions for students. Um, I met with Rick Swanson and Derek Smith to talk about getting input from high school students and middle school students. And the high school one, we're looking at November 18th, and then the middle school students November 19th, and those will be done after school so that as many students as possible will be able to participate. And we're looking <coughs> at giving extra credit or points, student council points, big red points, um, to encourage students to participate in this real civics activity and it's open to all ages in each of those schools. Thank you. Thank you. I have a request for you mm -hmm. from constituent, constituent, constituent. He asked that we push to eliminate the bus from travel on Route 228. The school buses. <laughs> Can we do that's that? That's to John. That's <laughs> not to Can you imagine the bus is not traveling on 228? Very difficult. Very difficult <laughs> to get children to school. <laughs> Why don't they Ed, change do their anything? route? Somebody's getting punchy. I know. <laughs> they, can, they can go Ward Street or Charles Street. Or <laughs> Ed, do you have anything? Uh, it's that time of year, and simple Simon the Pie Man is live and well. Uh, <laughs> We have our uh, request from the uh, our greatly appreciated uh, central office staff. Uh, there will be a delivery for you know what <laughs> on either Monday the 25th or Tuesday the 26th of November, I'll, and I'll let you know. It just yeah. All right, thank you. Happy to help with that if you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so policy met. Uh, we did a lot of it. Um, earlier but the, sure next, <laughs> the next <laughs> meeting is going to be um, Tuesday November 12th at 9 45 a.m. Um, also I wanted to mention uh, CPAC had an assistive technology presentation at the middle school on October 22nd and it was excellent it was really exciting to see all the tools that are, are being developed to make reading and education just accessible to all students so I just wanted to congratulate uh, Caroline Ferris and Lawrence Yoka teachers at the middle school for an excellent presentation and thank CPAC for hosting um, SNAP, uh, there's a Wahlburgers event coming up on Wednesday, November 13th from 5.30 to 9 at the shipyard. Should be a fun night. Um, and then a Fall Family Fun Day on November 17th from 1 to 3 at the South Shore Sports Center. And everybody's welcome. Great. Thank you very much. Carlos? So Long Range Planning will be meeting on the 19th at 4.30 p.m. And uh, the Hingham High School Student Council will be meeting on the 4th, December 4th. All right. Um, the Special Ed Subcommittee, we're meeting November 14th at 11 a.m. Um, I think that's it for me. NASA gave the METCO update. Um, that, that's it for me. Um, all right. Would someone like to make a motion to adjourn to executive to session? This is interesting. Uh, um, I'll make a motion to adjourn to executive session, not to return to open session for the purpose of approval of minutes of the executive session of the school committee held on October 15, 2019, and discussing matters related to the current HEA Unit A collective bargaining contract, the public discussion of which may be detrimental to the committee's bargaining position and discussing matters related to the collective bargaining negotiations with the HEA Unit A for the 2020-2023 contract, the public discussion of which may be detrimental to the committee's bargaining position. Second. Second. And all in favor? Roll call. Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.